Well, nothing here. Don't wake yourself.
I shan't tell you unless you come here. What is it, Jack? What have you thought of? I read a celebrated actor, Mr. McNaught, is going to be in London for another season. Yes, I read it. What of it? What of it? Well, what do you suppose? Oh, Jack! Well, you wouldn't take me to see McNaughton, would you? <gasps> would you take me to see McNaughton? My dear, I not only would take you to see McNaughton, I am going to take you to see McNaughton. Oh, Jack, what happened? What happened? Now, when would you like to go? You have three weeks according to this advertisement here. Oh, what perfect heaven. Let me see, do let me see. So you can see him in comedy or tragedy. Uh, whichever you prefer. So which would you like to see, the comedy or the tragedy? Oh, it is so hard to say. You would be equally wonderful. Which would you choose if you were me? Well, that depends now, doesn't it? On whether you want to laugh or whether you want to cry. I want to laugh. <laughs> but then I should like to cry, too. In fact, I should like to do both. <laughs> what made you decide to take me, Jack? Well, you've been very good lately, my dear, and I thought it would do well to take you out of yourself. Oh, Jack, you've been so much kinder lately. Is it possible you're beginning to see my point of view? I don't know that I ever differed from it, did I, fellow? Oh, Jack, dear, it's true. It's true. All I need is to be taken out of myself a little. Some small changes. To have some attention from you. Oh, I'd be better, Jack. I'd really try to be better. Well, you know in what way. I mean, I could get out of myself a little more. Well, what do you mean, my dear? Exactly better. You know. You know in what way, dear, about all that's happened lately. We said we wouldn't speak of it. No, let's not speak about that. Oh, no, I don't want to. What I have to say is so important. I have been better, even in the last week. Haven't you noticed it? Why is it? Because you have stayed in and been kind to me. Oh, the other night, when you stayed in, we played cards together. <laughs> it was like the old days. And I went to bed feeling a normal, happy healthy human being. On the day after when you read your book to me, Jack, and we sat by the fire, oh, I feel all my love for you coming back then, Jack. I went to sleep like a child that night. All those ghastly dreads and terrible, terrible fears seemed to have vanished. And all because you had stayed in and given me your time and kept me from brooding on myself in this house all day and all night. Well, I don't know if it is that. Or if your medication has begun to benefit you. Oh, no, it's not my medicine. Well, I've taken my medicine religiously. Haven't I taken it religiously? As much as I detest it. No, it's more than medicine I want. It's medicine of a sweet, sane mind. Being interested in something. Don't you see what I mean? Well, we are talking about some gloomy subjects, aren't we? Yeah, so I don't want to be gloomy. Well, that's the last thing I want to be. I just want you to understand. Same, understand. Well, don't I seem to? Haven't I just told you I'm taking you to the theaters? Oh, yes, yes, you have. Oh, you made me so happy. So happy, dear. Well, then what shall it be? The comedy or the tragedy? Oh, you must make up your mind. What shall it be? Oh, what shall it be? Oh, it matters so little. Don't you understand, my husband? I'm being taken to the play. <laughs> Come in. Oh, Nancy, I think we'll have another table today. Oh, just as you wish, madam. So, Nancy, tell me, if you were being taken to the play and you had to choose between comedy or tragedy, which would you choose? Well, me, madam? I would choose comedy every time. Oh, would you? And why would you choose comedy, Nancy? Well, because I like to laugh, I suppose. Do you? Well, I dare say you're right. I must bear it in mind. Mr. Manningham's taking me next week, you see. Oh, yes? No. I hope you have a lovely time. I'll be in with your muffins directly. Oh, you don't know her. Oh, 
she tries to torment and score off me all day long. Well, you don't see these things. A man wouldn't. She thinks me a poor soul. Now she can suffer the news that you're taking me to the theater. My dear, I think you imagine things. Oh, no, I don't. I think I'm too familiar with her. Well, come along to your tea now. You sit one side, and I the other like two children in the nursery. You seem wonderfully pleased with yourself, Bella. I must take you to the theater more often if this is a result. Oh, Jack, I wish you could. I don't see why we shouldn't. I used to like nothing so much as when I was a boy. In fact, you could scarcely believe it, but I even had ambition to be an actor myself at one time. Oh, I can well believe it. Who wants your tea now? You know, Bella, there must be some sensation to take part and lose yourself in the character of someone else. Gosh. I flatter myself that I could have made an actor. Oh, you were cut out for it. Anyone can see that. No. Really? Do you think so? I always felt a faint tinge of regret. I suppose one of would have required some training, but I believe I should have made it out, and perhaps made it to the top of the tree, for all I know. To be or not to be, that is the question. Whether it is nobler the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against the sea of troubles, and by opposing, end them. <laughs> oh, you see how fine your voice is? Well, you have made a great mistake. I wonder. Then, if you had been a famous actor, I should have had a free seat to come and watch you every night for the rest of my life, and then call for you at the stage door afterwards. Wouldn't that have been paradise? Oh, paradise for which you would soon tire, my dear. I'm sure that after a few nights you'd be staying home, just as you do now. Oh, no, I wouldn't. I should have to keep my eye on you for all the hussies that would be after you. There would be hussies after you. Wouldn't there? Fine. Well, that would be an advertisement, then. I know it, you wretch. But you wouldn't escape me. Oh, don't they look delicious? Aren't you glad I thought of them? Well, here's some salt. You want heaps of it. Oh, you have to forgive me for chattering on like this, Jack. I'm just feeling so happy. I can see that, my dear. <sighs> I may take him to play, you see? Here you are. Oh, I used to adore these as a child, didn't you? I wonder how long it's been since we've had them. We haven't had them since we were married, have we? Or have we? Have we? I don't know. I'm sure. I don't know. What is it? What is it now? What has happened? I do not wish to upset you, Bella, but I have just noticed something very much amiss. And if you rectify it while I'm not looking, I'll pretend it has not happened. Miss? What miss? I, I don't know. You know perfectly For God's sake, don't turn your back on me. What has happened? You know perfectly well what has happened. And if you will replace it, I will say no more. I, I don't know. You've left your tea. Um, tell me what it is. Tell me. Are you trying to make a fool of me, Bella? What I refer to is on the wall behind you. And if you replace it, I will say no more about it. The wall behind me? What? Oh. The, the picture has been taken down. It's the, the picture. Who has taken it down? Why has it been taken down? Yes, why indeed. Only you can answer that, Bella. Why was it taken down before? Will you please take it from wherever you've hidden it and put it back on the wall again? Oh, but I, I haven't hidden it, Jack. I don't know where it is. I, I didn't do it. Oh, for God's sake, look at me. I, I didn't do it. Well, someone else must have done it. Someone else? Are you suggesting that I should play such a fantastic and wicked trick? No. Oh. No, but, but someone else. You forgot I didn't do it. Someone else, dear, someone else. Someone else, eh? Someone else? You leave go of me. You are telling me, you half-witted thing. Someone else, eh? Well, we shall see. Oh, Jack, don't ring the bell. Don't ring it. Oh, don't call the servants to witness my shame. It's not my shame for having done it, but don't call them down. Oh, let's talk of this amongst ourselves. Don't have them come servants, and please don't. Don't have that girl in. Please! You leave go of me and sit down there? Someone else, eh? Well, we should see.
You'd better pull yourself together, hadn't you? Ah, Elizabeth. Now tell me, Elizabeth, do you notice anything amiss in this room? Take a good look around the walls and tell me if you notice anything amiss. Well, Elizabeth, what do you notice? Nothing, sir. Oh, the picture's been taken down, sir. Yes, the picture's been taken down. You noticed it once. And was that picture there this morning when you dusted this room? Yes, sir, it was, sir. I don't understand, sir. Neither do I, Elizabeth. Neither do I. And one more question before you go. Was it you that removed the picture from the wall? No, of course I ain't, sir. And have you at any time removed that picture <laughs> from its proper place? No, sir, never. Why should I, sir? Yes, indeed. Why should you? And now, will you kiss that Bible laying on the bureau there as a token of your truthfulness? <laughs> Very well. You may go and send Nancy in here at once. Yes. Oh, Jack. Spare me the girl. I'll say anything. I'll say that I did, Jack. I did. Don't have that girl into my mind. Will you have the goodness to contain yourself? <laughs> Come in. Yes, sir. Did you want me? <laughs> yes, I do want you, Nancy. If you will take a look at the wall on your right, you will see that the picture has gone. Oh, my word, so it has. What about no? I do not ask for any comment from you, Nancy. Now, will you please be a little less insolent in asking you the question that I ask, ask you? Now, did you take that picture down from the wall there? No, sir. Of course I did. Why should I want to? And now will you kiss that Bible lying on the bureau there as a solemn oath that you did not? With me, sir. Very well. You may go. You know, if, that if that I, is enough, Nancy. I... You may go. There. I think that we can now have consent to make the Give it to me! Let me kiss it too! There! There! Do you see? Do you see that I kiss it? There! Dear God, be careful what you do! Do you wish to commit sacrilege above all else? It is no sacrilege, Jack! Someone else has committed sacrilege! Now see, I swear before God Almighty that I never touched that picture! There! Then by God, you are mad! And you don't know what you do! You unhappy wretch, you're stop gibbering mad! Just like your wretched mother before. Mm. Jack, you promised me you would never say that again. The time has come to face facts, Bella. If this progresses, you will not be much longer under my protection. Jack. I'm going to make a last plea to you. I'm going to make a final plea. I'm desperate, Jack. Can't you see that I'm desperate? If you can't, you must have a heart of stone. Yes, whatever you say. Jack, I may be going mad like my poor mother, but if I am mad, you've got to treat me gently. Jack, before God, I never lied to you knowingly. If I have taken down that picture, I have not known it. I have not known it. If I took it down on those other occasions, then I did not know it then either. Jack, if I steal your things, your your keys, your pencils, your your handkerchiefs, and you find them later in the bottom of my box, as indeed you do, then I do not know that I have done it. Jack. If I commit these fantastic, meaningless mischiefs, so meaningless, if I do these things, then I am certainly going off my head. And you must treat me kindly and gently so that I make it well. You must bear with me. 
me, Jack, that storm and rage. God knows I'm trying, Jack, I'm trying. For God's sake, can't you see that I'm trying to be kind to me? Bella, my dear, have you any idea what that picture is now? Well, yes, I suppose it is behind the bureau. And will you please go see? Yes. Oh. Yes, here it is. Then you did the work, Miss Bella. You did the work. No, no, Jack, I only supposed it was. Well, I only supposed it was because it had been found there before. It would have been found there twice before. I didn't know, Jack, I didn't. There's no sense in you walking around the room with a picture in your hand, Bella. Go and put it back in its proper place. And 
emphatically, no, I am not. You play fair by me, and I'll play fair by you. If we are going to be enemies, you and I, you will find that it is I who shall get the best of it. Somebody called? Who is it? Time to go away. It's a gentleman, madam. He wants to see you. I don't want to be disturbed. Time to go. He wants to see my husband. The husband is out. No, madam. He wants to see you. You must see him, madam. Elizabeth, leave me alone. I want to be left alone. Tell him to go away. Madam, I don't know what's going on between you and the master, but you've got to hold up, madam. You've got to hold up. I'm going out of my mind, Elizabeth. That's what's going on. Oh, don't talk like that. You've got to be brave. You can't go on sitting here in the dark like this, or your mind will go. Oh, oh, he's breaking downstairs for you. Listen, it'll happen. You get out of yourself. What new torment is this? I am right of this seat, I tell you. Let me turn that light up in here. There. Oh, it'll be all right. He's done. I can't have anyone in. I'm not fit to be seen. Here, call now. You look all right. Listen, I'll go call him up. <sighs> You don't know me from Adam. That's about the root of the matter, isn't it? Oh, 
No, it's not that. No doubt you've come to see my husband. Oh, no, you couldn't be further out. On the contrary, I chose this precise moment to call when I knew your husband was out. May I take off my things and sit down? Uh, yes, I suppose you may. You're looking very pale. Have you been crying? Really, I'm afraid I don't understand at all. Oh, you will shortly. So, you're the lady who's going off her head, aren't you? Well, what made you say that? Who are you? What have you come to talk about? You're running away with things and asking me more than I can answer at once. Instead of that, I'll ask you a question or two. Will you give me your hands, please? I want you to take a good look at me and see if you're not looking at someone to whom you can give your trust. I'm a perfect stranger, and you can tell little from my face besides that. But I can tell a great deal from yours. What? What can you tell me? I see the tokens of one who's traveled a very long way on this path of sorrow and doubt. And will, I'm afraid, have to travel a bit further before she comes to the end. Though I fancy she is coming to the end for all of that. Now, will you trust me and listen to me? I'm old enough to be your grandfather. Yes. Who are you? Just a plain police detective. Police detective? Yes, or at least I was many years ago. But I'm still detective enough to see that you've been interrupted in your tea. Won't you start again and let me have a cup? Yes, I will give you a cup. It only wants water. Um, why don't you sit down? I'm afraid it won't be very hot. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. So, how long have you been married? Uh, seven years and a little. Where have you lived during all that time? Well, first we went abroad, then we lived in Yorkshire, then six months ago my husband took this house. And does your husband leave you alone like this in the evening? Yes, he goes to his club, I believe, and does business. And does your husband give you free run of the house while he's out? Yes. Well, no, not the top floor. Why do you ask? Uh, before I go any further, I have to tell you that there's a leakage in your household. You have a maid called Nancy? Yes, yes. And Nancy walks out in the evening with a young man named Booker in my employ. I only live a few streets from you, you know. Oh, yes? Well, there's hardly anything that goes on in this household that is not described in detail to Booker, and from that corner it reaches me. I knew it. I knew she talked. Oh, now I know it. She shall be dismissed. No! No such retribution shall overtake her at this time. In fact, I fancy you should be rather heavily in debt to your maid Nancy, were it not for her indiscretions. I should not be here now, should I? We're talking about the top floor. Above this floor is the bedroom. And above that, the top floor, is that not right? Yes. And have you ever been to the top floor? No, never. Well, it's shut up. No one goes up there. My husband has forbidden it. Not even a servant has. No. Rather funny. Yes. Well, I need to ask you a personal question. When did you first get the notion in your head that your reason was playing you tricks? How did you know? Never mind how I know. How did it begin? Oh, I've always had that dread. My mother died insane. She's quite young. I mean, she's my age. But only in the last six months of this house, things began to happen. And does the top floor have anything to do with this? Yes, yes it has. That's how this dreadful horror began. Oh, do tell me about the top floor. I don't know what to say. It all sounds so incredible. It seems when I'm alone at night, I get the idea that someone's walking about up there. Up there. At night when my husband is out, I hear noises from the banner, but I'm too afraid to go up. Now, have you told your husband about this? No, I'm afraid to. He, he gets angry. He says I imagine things that don't exist. So it never struck you that it might be your own husband walking about with him? Well, yes, that is what I thought. But I thought I must be mad. It's true, then. I knew it. I knew it. 
When he leaves this house, he comes back. He comes back and he walks about up there, up and down, up and down. He comes back like a ghost. How does he get up there? That's what we're going to find out. There are such commonplace resources as roofs and fire escapes, you know. Your husband is no ghost, but we have been here very far from that. Tell me, when did you first begin to think it was him? Well, it was the light, the gas light. It went down and it went up. Thank God I can tell this to someone at last. I must tell you, I can tell everything by the light of the gas. You see that mantle there? Now it is burning full. But if an extra light were put on the kitchen or when we're lit in the bedroom, then this light would slowly sink. It was the same all over the house. Yes, yeah, it's just a question of insufficient gas pressure. It's the same in my house, but do go on. Every night after he goes out, I find myself waiting for something. Then all at once I look around the room and I see that the lights are slowly going down. Well, at first I tried not to notice, but after a time it began to get on my nerves. I would go all over the house to see if an extra light had been put on, but none ever had. It's always about the same time, about ten minutes after he goes out. That's what made me think that he had come back, and that it was he who was walking about up there. Oh, I sit here for hours, terrified, waiting for him to come back. And I always know when he's coming again. Suddenly the lights go up again, and ten minutes later I hear his key is locked downstairs, and he's back again. You know, he should have been a policeman. Are you laughing at me? You think I imagine everything too? No, I'm just merely praising the keenness of your observation. I think you've made a quite remarkable discovery. Tell me, that's not the only cause that has given you reason to doubt your sanity. Has anything else been happening? Don't be afraid to tell me. Yeah, there, are, there are other things. It seems my mind and my memory are playing me tricks. Tricks? What sort of tricks? He gives me things to look after, and when he asks for them, they are gone and can never be found. And I will hunt the place for him, and he will find them lying hidden in the bottom of my box. Only today, before you came, that picture had been taken down and hidden. Who could have done it but myself? I try to remember. I break my heart trying to remember, but I can't. And then there was that terrible business about the dog. The dog? Yes, we had a little dog, and a few weeks ago it was found with its paw hurt, and he believes, oh God, how can I tell you what he believes, that I had hurt the dog. He does not let me near it now. I'm not allowed to see it. I begin to doubt, don't you see? I begin to believe that I imagine everything. Perhaps I do. Are you here now? Is this a dream too? I'm afraid they're going to lock me up. You know, it has just occurred to me that you'd be all the better for a little medicine. Medicine? Well, you're not a doctor, are you? No, I'm not a doctor. <laughs> I mean, a little medicine wouldn't do you any harm. Oh, but I have medicine. He makes me take it, and I hate it. It does me no good. How can medicine help a mind that's ill? Ah, mine's an exceptional medicine. I have some with me. You must try it. Well, what medicine is it? You shall sample it and see. You see, it's been employed by humanity for several ages for the instantaneous removal of dark fear and doubt. That seems to fit you, doesn't it? Removal of doubt? Well, how can a medicine affect that? That we don't know, but the fact remains that it does. Now, have you anything handy as two glasses? Yes, I will give them. <laughs> whiskey! Oh, but I must not take whiskey. I can't do that. You underestimate your powers. <laughs> you see, I can't have you thinking that you can't trust your reason, and this will give you faith in your reason like nothing else. <laughs> no, there's no water. Oh, there we are.
ever have heard of the cabman's friend? Cabman's friend? Oh. Here's to your very good help. Go on. Oh. Yeah, was that so nasty? No, I rather like it. My mother used to give us to us as children when we had the fever. <laughs> what were you saying? Who is the cabman's friend? It would be best to ask who was the cabman's friend, for she was an elderly lady who what died many, many years ago. An old lady many years ago? What has she to do with me? A great deal, I fancy, if you will follow with me patiently. Her name was Barlow. Alice Barlow was an old lady of great wealth and decided eccentricities. Her principal mania was the protection of cabinet. Now, you may think that an extraordinary hobby, but in her odd way, she did a lot of good. It was not my privilege to know her, but it was my duty to see her on just one occasion. And that was when her throat was cut and she was lying dead on the floor. Oh, how horrible! Oh, do you mean she was murdered? Yes, she was murdered. The murderer was never discovered, but the motive was obvious enough. The Barlow jewels had been inherited by her, and it was well known that she kept them in her bedroom on the upper floor. She lived alone, and for that she paid the penalty of her life. The man seemed to have got in at about 10 in the evening and stayed till dawn. And apart, presumably, from the jewels, only a few trinkets were taken. But the whole house had been ransacked. The police decided it must have been a revengeful maniac as well as a robber. I had other theories then, but I was a nobody and not in charge of the case. Well, what were your theories? Well, it seemed to me that she might have been eccentric, but she was by no means a fool. We presume he killed her to silence her, but what then? What if she got those jewels hidden in some inconceivably cunning place? And the only person who could tell them where they were was lying dead on the floor. Do you conceive it possible that this man might not have given up hope of one day getting up the treasure that lay there and waited all these years and done many things, traveled abroad, got married even? until at last he could resume the search he'd begun on that terrible night. You know the old theory that the criminal always returns to the scene of the crime? Well, in this case, there's something more than morbid compulsion. There's a treasure there to be unearthed if only he could search again. Search without fear of suspicion. How would he do that? What's the matter, Mrs. Manning? The lights! The lights are going back down. Well, he has come back. He is upstairs now. Well, you must go. He will know you are here. You must go. Stop. You've got to keep your head. Don't you see my meaning yet? Don't you understand that this was the house? House? What house? The old woman's house. 25 years ago, Alice Barlow laid dead on this floor at this house. 25 years ago, the man who killed her ransacked this house. What if he's still searching? You see why you must keep your head? Oh, my husband! My husband is up there! Precisely that. Your husband. I'm afraid you're married to a quite dangerous gentleman. Now, here. Drink this, as we have quite a lot to do. In this house? Who makes you think this was the house? Because I was on the case and came here myself, that's all. Uh, the idea's mad. Mad. How can you imagine my husband is, is what you imagine he may be? Well, when the police came here 20 years ago, there was a lot of routine work to do, interviewing of friends and relatives and so forth. Most of that was left to me. Oh, amongst them, all the acquaintances, relatives, nephews, nieces, etc., there was a young man named Sidney Power. You've not heard that name at all, have you? Sidney Power? No. He was kind of a distant cousin, apparently much attached to the old lady, and even assisting her in her good works. The only thing is, I remember that face. Well, I saw that face again about five weeks ago. The surprising thing 
was the lady on his arm and the locality in which they were walking. Who was the lady on his arm? You were the lady on his arm and you were walking down this street. <gasps> what are you saying? Do you mean you think my husband, my husband is this, this Mr. Power? Not exactly, it makes curious the right. What are you saying? You're talking riddles. No, I'm not talking riddles. I'm just trying to preserve a precise and calculating tone because you are up against the most critical moment of your life and your whole future depends upon what you do in the next hour, nothing less. You're not going mad. You're slowly, methodically being driven mad. And why? Because you're married to a criminal maniac who's be beginning to be afraid you know too much. His name is no more mania than mine is. He's Sidney Power, and he murdered Alice Barlow in this house. He waited all these years and done many things until he found it safe to acquire this house in a legal way. And then he acquired the empty house next door. And every night for the past three weeks, he's gone into the back of that house, gone up to the roof and crossed in through the sky into this house. I know that because I've seen him do it. And you've watched the gas lights and know the same thing. And now that he owns this house, his plan is to get rid of you and by slowly driving you mad and sending you to a lunatic asylum. Thank God you're not married to him. Not married? Not married? He married me. No doubt he did. But I happen to know he made the same sort of union with another lady many years before you. He met you. Moreover, the lady's still alive, and English law has a highly exacting taste in the adult My God, are you speaking the truth? Where is his wife now? If my guesses are right, she lives on the continent of Australia, where I know for a fact he spent five years. Did you know that? No, I did not know that. Ah, if I could only find it, then everything would be easier. And that is my problem. I need evidence. And that is why I came to see you. You've got to give me evidence or help me find it. This is my husband. My husband, don't you understand? Do you ask me to betray the man who married me? You mean the man who betrayed you into thinking you're married to him, don't you? Oh, you must go. I, I must think this through. I, I must cling to the man I married, mustn't I? Cling to him if you must, but not think you're the only piece of ivy. Cling to him if you desire, just as his fancy women cling to him in the low places of this town. That is the sort of wall you have to cling to. What are you suggesting? I'm not suggesting anything. I'm only telling you what I've seen. This man upstairs comes to life at night in more ways than one, and I've made it my business to follow him. And I can promise you he has taste in unemployed actresses, which he's at no means to conceal. Is this the truth? Are you telling me the truth? Will you look me in the eyes and see if you think I'm telling you the truth? Yes, I've known it. How strange it is that I've known it all along. It's hard to hear you from you, but you're no more tied to this gentleman. You're under no more obligation than all those wretched women in those places. You must learn to be thankful for that. What do you want? What do you want me to do? I need his papers, his identity. There's some clue somewhere in this house, and we've got to get at it. Where does he keep his papers? Papers, but I don't have no papers. Unless his bureau. Yes, bureau? Yes, he keeps these drawers always locked. Oh, well, we'll have a look inside. Well, how can you if they are locked? Oh, it doesn't look too formidable. Oh, but you must not touch that. Come now, madam, you're working with me, not against me, aren't you? Oh, you must not tamper with that. You know what you have done. Not if we're clever, and this doesn't even ask for cleverness. You see, just... Let's go. The lights. The lights are going up. Oh, he's coming back. He's coming back now. You must go. You must go. He's coming back. Dear Lord in 
heaven, it looks as if the unexpected has entered in. I thought it was unexpected. I never know what he'll do. Would you go ring for Elizabeth? You can fetch her if you like. Oh, you know, he's not going to come through the window unless, or be around in the front in less than five minutes unless he's a magician. Now, you seen anything I've missed? Oh, yes, the whiskey here. I told you to be a good policeman. Don't forget the glasses. Oh, please, go! Ah, Elizabeth, come here, please. Elizabeth, you and I have got to do some quite calm but rather quick thinking. Are you anxious to help your mistress? Well, yes, sir. I told you I was, sir. What's it all about? Are you anxious to help your mistress blindly without asking questions? Yes, sir, but you see, um... Come now, Elizabeth. Are you or aren't you? Yes, sir. Good. <coughs> now, the mistress and I have reason to suppose that in about five minutes' time, the master will be returning to this house. I do not think it advisable for me to leave at this time, as I might be seen doing so by the master. Will you be so good as to take me down to your kitchen and hide me there for a short space of time? You can put me in the oven if you like. Yes, sir, I could take you down to the kitchen, but you see, Nancy's down there, sir. Nancy, what the devil is this? I, I thought this was Nancy's afternoon off. Didn't we arrange that I would come when she was out? Yes, sir, but for some reason she stayed on. I think she's got a young man. Anyway, I couldn't make her go. Oh, all right, all right, all right. All right. So she was here when I arrived, and she knows I'm here. Is that it? Well, no. See, she went down to the scullery when I went downstairs to answer the door, and I told her that there's a man who found a wrong All right, wrong all right. That's, she that's better. That's better. But that means we can't go, you can't entertain me in the kitchen. Now, quickly, Elizabeth, think. Where else can you hide me? Mm. Well, you could go to the bedroom, sir. Mine and Nancy's, I Oh, that sounds enchanting. Oh, lead the way. <laughs> oh, well, if Nancy goes up there before she goes out, sir. Ah, you think of everything, and you're a good soul. What, where does this lead you? What's the matter with this? Oh, that's uh, Mary keeps his clothes, sir. Yes, you could go on in there. He'd never find you in there, sir. There's a big uh, bureau or place where, you know, a uh, I don't know. A wardrobe, sir. Thank you so Excuse much. Wait in the back. <laughs> Elizabeth. I'm sure you ought to go. Don't worry, it'll be all right. It'll be all right. Oh, admirable accommodations. There he is. Now we thought you'd be quick. Matt, you go up to your, your bed, and Elizabeth, you go to your room because you don't have enough time to get downstairs. Now we need to turn off the light. Go to bed. Am I, am I to go to bed? Yes, don't you understand? He's coming. Go there. Stay there. You're heading. It's bad. You've got a bad headache. Will you go, for goodness sake? Yes, I did. Or oh, Mrs. Manning. 
Mr. Mayor, Mrs. Mayor went to bed, so she had a bad headache, and she went to bed. Oh, and how long has the good lady been in bed? Do you know? Oh, about three hours. Oh, and how long has the good lady been in bed? Do you know? She went to bed a little while ago, sir. Mm. Oh, well, then we must be quiet, must we? Walk about like cats. Can you walk about like a cat, Elizabeth? Uh, yes, sir, I think so, sir. Very well, then. Walk about like a cat, uh. all right. That is all. <laughs> uh, Elizabeth. Yes. Why haven't you cleared away the tea things? Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I was really just about to. I think you'd better clear away the tea things, Elizabeth. Uh, yes, sir. <clears throat> uh, sir, uh, where are you going to have supper, sir? Yes, I'm going to have supper. The question is, am I going to have supper here? Are you going to have it out, sir? Yes, I'm going to have it out. I just came in to the place by tie. Oh. Uh, can I get you a new tie, sir? Would you like to me to get you a tie? Uh. Why? Do you know where my ties are kept? Yes, sir. In your room, sir. Would you like me to get you one? I'd well, quite let you know, Elizabeth. And do you know what sort of tie that I want tonight? Yes, sir. I think I know what sort of tie you need, sir. <laughs> well, then all I can say is you know a lot more than I do. No, I think you must leave me and choose my own tie. That is, if I have your permission, Elizabeth. Yes, sir. <clears throat> yes, sir. Said, and repeated in more ways than one. 
You do realize that, don't you? Thank you, sir. I only wish to serve. Of course. And now, I'm going to go out. In fact, I'm even going to try to be a little gay. Do you understand that? Or do you think it is wrong? Oh, no, sir. I think you ought to have whatever pleasure you can, sir. While you can. Yes. 